Okay, so now we're going to prove a theorem about extensions of uniformly continuous functions, specifically when we're talking about intervals. Okay, so it's like if we have a uniformly continuous function on an open interval, then this theorem lets us extend it to the endpoints of that interval uh, in, a, in a continuous way, or vice versa. If we have a function on an open interval that can be extended continuously to the endpoints, then the original function was uniformly continuous. That's actually the content of this theorem. And I, I really want to stress that, like, I mean, the concept of extensions is perfectly reasonable to talk about for, like, arbitrary sets, like, where you have, you know, a function defined on some random set. You can talk about extending that however you want. You can extend it in, in a way that, uh, you know, adds many, many points. You know, you could add infinitely many points to the domain if you want. Um, so we're really focusing on a very, very specific type of extension for uniformly continuous functions, which is where you start with an open interval and then you extend to include the endpoints, okay? But the reason we're, we're so interested in this is because we've seen time and time again that if you consider an open interval and you think about like sort of an arbitrary continuous function defined on that open interval, that continuous function can actually exhibit a lot of uh, weird behavior. In fact, let me, let me kind of like uh, just give an overview of this, right? So we've seen that continuous functions on open intervals can exhibit bad quote unquote bad behavior, right? So something like if we have A and B, you know, you can have a, a function which, um, you know, it starts oscillating infinitely fast as you approach an endpoint, or, you know, you can have a function which has, you know, a vertical, you know, it has a pole uh, at one of the endpoints, for example, right? Um, right, these are two types of uh, behavior that can happen. There's actually sort of more, I mean, you, know, you could have a function who's, that do, sort of does both, where it like, it oscillates infinitely fast and the amplitude of the oscillation gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So, um, I think between those three, that's kind of like, that covers most of the weird behaviors that can happen, I guess, at least commonly. Um, so this should be kind of like your mental model of what continuous functions can do on open intervals. But the thing is, as we've seen, in all of these cases, these functions are not uniformly continuous, right? So these functions can't be extended continuously for one thing. And they are also not uniformly continuous. Okay, so it turns out that these things are actually equivalent. Like the reason we can't extend them continuously is because that they, to begin with, they're not actually uniformly continuous and vice versa, um, you know, they, you know, they, they're not uniformly continuous because we can't extend them continuously, I guess, if you want to think about it that way. Um, Either way, right? The, the logic flows in both directions. So let me state the theorem. So this is theorem 19.5. Um, a real valued function f on a b is uniformly continuous on a b if and only if f can be extended to a continuous function f tilde on a b the closed interval Okay, so that's the theorem. 
Uh, and I'm just going to basically go straight into the proof because it's, well, actually, no, let me, let me draw a picture. I'm going to make an edit here. Okay, so here's our uniformly continuous function. Uh, and the idea is that we want to show we can, we can fill in these holes, right? Obviously, from this picture, it just looks obvious that we can do that, but we should show rigorously, you know, that this is possible. Um, and so the question is like, what is, what should, what values should go here, right? Like how can we describe the values that have to go here? So what are these values, right? Well, one way of thinking about it is that this value should just be whatever the limit is as you approach this endpoint, right? Whatever the limit of F is. The problem is we haven't really defined like limits of continuous functions or whatever, or just limits of functions in general. We've defined limits of sequences, right? So we can't actually take the limit of f of x as x approaches a, uh, because that doesn't make sense yet. But what we can do is we can make a sequence, right? Let's say xn approaches a, right? And so we get a bunch of points like this. And then they start getting really close, OK? And then basically the question, well, I mean, you know, this sequence we hope should have a limit, right? The value we want to use for f of a, right? But the question is why does f of xn converge? This is because it is Cauchy, right? As we showed before, uniformly continuous functions preserve Cauchy sequences. So because Xn converges to A, the sequence Xn is Cauchy. And then because F is uniformly continuous, that means F of Xn is Cauchy. So it has some kind of a limit. And whatever that limit is, we can use that to define F of A. And notice that like this is another situation where we have some sequence that we really expect to converge, but we really have like no way of actually describing the limiting value, right? So that's why we, that's why the Cauchy criterion is like so useful in this case, because the Cauchy criterion is like phrased in a way that does not, you know, refer to the limiting value at all. You can just say that the sequence is Cauchy just from looking at it without having to know what the limit is. Okay. So let me just kind of go through the proof. So the proof of theorem. 19.5. Uh, so, well, first of all, oh, there's actually like one direction that's like really easy because this was an if and only if, right? If you remember, this is an if and only if statement. So uh, it's actually easy to go backwards. So if you assume that F can be extended, it's easy to show that it's uniformly continuous. So like, suppose the desired extension exists, right? then since f is continuous on a b we've shown that continuous functions on closed intervals are automatically uniformly continuous right is uniformly continuous then since f is a restriction of f tilde f is also uniformly continuous, right? That much is fairly straightforward. Okay, so let's go the other direction. So suppose f is uniformly continuous on a, b, right? So now uh, we want to make the argument that I just described. So take xn to be some sequence in a b converging to a okay then xn is cauchy so f of xn is cauchy um so f of xn converges to let's say um I don't know, what do they call it? 
Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, f of xn. Oh, they used sn, I guess. Yeah, screw it, whatever. Uh, so f of xn, I'm just going to call it alpha. OK. So f of xn converges, converges to alpha, right? I mean, it's a Cauchy sequence in R. So OK. So define f tilde of a to be alpha. Um, now we claim any, uh, for, so, so the problem is like, we just took Xn kind of randomly. It's just some random sequence that converges to A, right? There are many choices of a convergent sequence in AB converging to A, obviously. So how do we know that the value we got by cho choosing the sequence Xn is like the only value you can get? Like, what if we started with a different sequence, would we get a different value? If that was the case, then that would be really bad because actually that would directly mean that there's no way to extend f to uh, evaluate a because then there would be two sequences approaching a such that the values of f uh, approach different limits, right? So um, that so for any we claim for any uh, let's say I don't know S n uh, sequence in a b converging to A that um, F of Sn converges to the same alpha, right? Um, so to see this, note that, so we can basically interweave Sn with the sequence Xn. So um, the sequence S1, X1, S2, X2, S3, X3, and so on, also converges to A. So F of um, F of S1, the sequence F of S1, F of X1, F of S2, so on converges, right? Like what we just said, because the fact that this converges to A uh, means that it's Cauchy, right? So then that means that this sequence is Cauchy, which means it converges to some number. Um, since f of xn is a oops is a subsequence, then the limit is alpha, right? The limit of this uh, interwoven f of s1, f of x1, f of s2, f of x2, so on. The limit of that has to be alpha because it has, it converges, we know it converges and one of its subsequences converges to alpha. But then because f of s1, f of s2, so on, is another subsequence, the limit of that is also alpha. So I'm gonna just like flip to a new page. So since f of sn is also a subsequence, then f of Sn goes to alpha 2. Uh, so any sequence, whoa, any sequence converging to A has f of Sn approaching alpha, meaning f tilde is continuous at a. Similarly for b. So we can do the exact same process for b, make a sequence approaching b, and then any sequence approaching b will give a sequence of values of f. Also approaching, you know, if you call it beta, then all of the sequences will make f approach beta. And so beta is a consistent, uh, you know, choice for f tilde of b. Uh, so f tilde, well, I mean, so you, you see, right? So yeah, so f tilde is continuous on a, b. 
Of course, F tilde is continuous on, on the open interval AB just because on that open interval, it's just equal to F. So, you know. So that's that. Uh, I think I'm going to call it for this video now. And in the next video, which I think will be the last one, I'll talk a little bit about the relationship between uniform continuity and derivatives.